Hey, welcome to Gold's Garage. So, uh, the subject of this video today is it's a shootout of rocker arms. And if you watch my videos before, one of the things I do like to do, with, especially with small camshafts, is to use a 1.6 rocker arm ratio because uh, it increases your lift everywhere and helps everywhere. And as opposed to duration, doesn't hurt your low end performance, doesn't hurt uh, your idle quality or anything like that. It just gives you more air into the engine and makes more power. So uh, just a little background before we get into that, we're gonna give you a, a complete demonstration of how we do it and the results. And the results are going to surprise you, I think, uh, in terms of the, some of the rocker arms that we know and trust, maybe not be quite exactly what we expected, but. This is a quick, a quick background on the 427. You've seen this video, this engine before, if you watch my videos. So uh, this engine was on the dyno just before Christmas and worked real well. It's sold and it looks a little different now. We have different valve covers. We're installing the serpentine belt system. I've got it mocked up as far as I can go. This engine will have a part uh, uh, air conditioning and the alternator obviously goes here. So we can't mock that up yet. We haven't got that here, uh, but it's all coming together. And if you're thinking of putting a big block where there used to be a small block, hang in there because we're gonna show you some videos. This uh, is an El Camino and it has small block now and we're going to a big block. And we're process of accumulating parts. And as soon as the weather gets nice, we're gonna do the install. So, so back to the subject at hand. Here's my mock-up. So I've also talked about building a 400 small block and this is the 400 small block and I'm waiting for rotating assembly parts. I don't have that and I'm, while I'm doing that, I'm doing a little bit of a science project on rocker arm ratio. So before I show you the results, uh, first of all, I'll show you what I'm going to compare. So this is a GM. These are the rocker arms that I just happen to have in stock. So GM performance, uh, uh, aluminum rocker arm and these are the rocker arms you buy a ZZ383 or a ZZ6 or a race engine 604 race engine these are the rocker arms you're going to get they're very expensive they're full roller rockers and they act these ones actually come out of uh, my race car so next is a set of exactly the same thing only 1.6 rocker arm ratio the standard ratio for a small block is 1.5 so these are 1.6 rocker arm ratio and we're going to show you, give you results of how well they perform. This is a uh, PRW rocker arm. And it's a it's a stamp steel rocker arm, but it's a roller tip rocker arm. And they actually did pretty good, actually, in the test. You'll see that. These two, I don't really know. Uh, I just kind of inherited these rocker arms, and I don't really know who made them. I mocked up. Oh, sorry. It's this is a crane. I apologize. And I disidentified it. I actually measured these rocker arms out before I did the test. I came to the conclusion this is a 1.6 and this is a 1.5. And the results, this is stamp 1.5, so I know that. And as a base case, we have our stamp steel rocker arm that comes in uh, OEM rocker arm that comes on almost every small box Chevrolet. And there's a million of these things running around. And so, and they're all, these are also 1.5, nominally 1.5. All GM stock rocker arms are 1.5. And so we're going to show you the results. First of all, the way I performed this test, I've got two cylinder head, two different cylinder heads on this engine right now. And one is a GM performance cylinder head and one is a Speedmaster head. I've had, these heads are all rebuilt and ready to go. And I haven't decided which one I'm going to use because I need to know my final compression ratio. I need to get the short block together and measure deck height before I can do that. So I'm kind of doing a mock-up of tests to see how rock runs perform on the various heads. So one quick test is to show if someone has never had to do this before. If you change camshafts and you make a bunch of changes to your engine, your stock rock arms or the, any rock arm ratio or length of push rod may not be correct. So this is a quick little tool. You can buy this, I'm sure, lots of places on, in Summit. And uh, also you can buy this from, uh, from Amazon. So quick test to see if your rocker arm ratio is right. 
just you make sure you're first of all when I do any test I use a solid valve lifter and right now I can turn this engine over uh, there you go I can turn the engine over easily with the solid valve lifter in it the camshafts obviously in it so you just plunk this guy down on the push rod that you plan to use and look at the gap if there's a gap here uh, then your rocker arm is too short uh, if a rock, the push rod is too short, if there's a gap on this side, your push rod is too long. So uh, fortunately, I had these push rods in stock also, and they're, for this head, they work out perfectly. There's no gap under the push rod and no gap under the, under the valve. So uh, that's a good way to go. The other way, if you can see that I've, I've painted uh, machinist blue on the head of all the valves, is so the other way that we do that is install the rocker arm with the valve spring, turn the engine over a number of times, and it'll leave a witness mark on the valve. And you want that witness mark to be at the center of the valve as much as possible. And you want that witness mark to be as narrow as possible as well. So I've also verified the combination of push rods and rocker arms that I plan to use uh, that way as well to make sure that uh, push rod length is important. If your push rod is too long or too short, you're going to wear your valve guides out quickly for one thing, and you're not going to get the same performance. So back to the rocker arm test. I try to do this as scientific as possible. Once again, I use a solid valve lifter, and you have to use a solid valve lifter if you're opening against a valve spring because the lifter would just collapse. You'll never get an accurate reading. And for every reading that I've taken, and I'm going to show you the results, every reading that I've taken, I got at least three repeatable numbers that were exactly the same or within the one percent of the same before we before i accept that as a valid number so i've done that with every one of the rock arms that i've described here and this is the setup that i use on the front of the engine i we haven't used a magnetic base dial indicator and i used to use an engine plate it's a good way to mount your dot magnetic base dial indicator set that right on the valve uh, install the rocker arm ratio that you're going to use, adjust the valve. And once again, this is a, the saw the lifter, so uh, we don't need to preload it. And I just turn the engine over. And when it gets hard to turn, turn over, I use a breaker bar because it's, you can do that nice and smoothly against the valve and see the rocker arm turning. And so we take the measurement based on from zero how much lift you get as you go through the rotation. So that's the process. And here's the results. So the first sheet I'm going to show is the two together. Average performance ratio on both. So I've taken the performance of each rocker arm on each head and averaged them. And then the best. And I'm going to show a blowout of that as well. So let's look at the average first. So the GM performance, so what I've, if you look across here, there's the advertised ratio, 1.5. That's the performance on the GM head. That's the performance on uh, the Speedmaster head. And that's the overall average. And that's the percentage of rocker arm ratio compared to what's advertised. So on average, the GM performance 1.5 was 97%. It's only 1.461. Here's the real surprise. The GM performance ratio uh, average is 1.518 for the 1.6 rocker arm. So barely over 1.5. It's only 94%. But I have to note something here. Uh, I'm going to make another sheet of best because both of these GM rocker arms cannot be used on the Speedmaster heads because they will interfere with the inside of the rocker arm will interfere with the valve retainer. So... Uh, I'm going to show you another sheet on that. The Blue Scorpion rocker arms, the one that's actually on the engine right now, turned out to be the best overall. They were right on the number. And both uh, the GM heads and the, and the Speedmaster heads, and they come out at exactly 100%, 1.6 uh, ratio average. The Steel Roller rocker arms, the PRW rocker arms, got the same result on both heads. And they're 98 percent it's actually 1.569 the light gold ones and i think they're they're both uh i mentioned this are crane yes 
They're both crane rocker arms. The ones I marked up as 1.6 ended up being a 1.550 average. And the dark ones uh, ended up, they're 1.5 average and ended up at 471 at 98%. So here's your base case. If you're not thinking of using stamp steel rocker arms, at least in the test I did, the actual ratio measured, once again, three repeatable measurements, exactly the same, only 1.328 or 88% of, of the lift that's advertised. So then I did another, another set of charts based on the best performance uh, of the rocker arms. Once again, the GM rocker arms are not going to be used on the Speedmaster heads anyway. So their performances are much better. Uh, and the, if you use them on the GM performance heads, 1.584 for a 98% for the 1.5s, 1.541 for 96% for the 1.6s. The Blue Scorpions, again, exactly, one, actually a little bit over, 100.6%. The PRW Steel ones, 98.1%. And the Crane Rocker Arms, the uh, 1.6 were 99.6% on the PRW on the uh, Speedmaster heads and 101% on the Speedmaster heads. So the, uh, the stamp rock arms gave me the exact same number on both sets of heads. They're only 88.5%. So uh, it's been stated there's no advantage of going to a roller rocker compared to a stamp seal rocker, but based on these results, uh, it looks like there is because there are actually other stamp seal rocker arms that you can buy that advertise 1.52 ratio. And I think the point of that is at least to get the full amount of the theoretical ratio that you think you have. Because you're, if you're trying to determine maximum valve lift, your rocker arm ratio is critical. So hope you found that interesting. I will post some information on the, with the video. And uh, as always, please like or subscribe. You will see more videos of this 400 as it goes together and it'll be on the dyno as soon as we get it, as soon as we get it running right now, we're just waiting on some parts. So, uh, look for that in the future and like it, subscribe once again, and thank you for watching Gold's Garage.